The first really major press about Tom Michelle is a story in the New York Times Magazine. For a young African-American fine artist, it was incredible. It was literally rock star status. Incredible photograph of him on the cover. And that's really about John Michelle as a person, as a phenomenon, because he's propelled into the bigger world of culture. John Michelle has become gigantic celebrity, famous, wealthy, hanging out with celebrities, praised, lavish, gifts, and money. Everybody wanted a piece of him. Of all the cast, you've risen. You're the one who gets singled out as this kind of a personality. But the same time, I sort of enjoy, I enjoy, the, I enjoy that they take him up bad for it. Yeah. It was such a big thing for John to become that close with Andy, but he was yeah. the master of the game. It was great to be that tight with somebody that we all looked up to in that way. Okay, I'm going. Oh, <laughs> uh, and this is my best. I mean, no, not the richest artist in the world, no, Jean Michel. Jean Michel, what's your last name? What's your last name, sweetheart? Fuck yeah. So, um, I understand why uh, you uh, had an with the hobnobs. <laughs> <laughs> John became a little bit out of touch with the old school fellows. I really missed the old John a lot because I didn't want to call him because I knew that I was going to get this indifference from him. And then I'd go to his art openings and I'd see him hanging out in the corner with a whole different crowd, people that would ignore me. Their friendship and their relationship led to not just dabbling and trying out a few things together, but a large body of work. I think what he had to say was probably like, the most fun. Seeing how we dealt with things was cool. But he's really fun. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of funny jokes. I was there once when they were working, and Andy would get mad at Sean Michel for he would paint something, and then Sean Michel would paint over it. And it, that was funny to see. Andy was more influenced by Sean Michel than Sean Michel was influenced by Andy because Andy had given up drawing, and it was Jean-Michel that got him to draw again, and nobody could draw like Andy, it was insane. You will work for a year. Would well, you come up with the idea for one, and then you come up with one, and how did you uh, do the collaboration? He started, he, he would start most of the things. He would put, he'd start one of them, put some, something very concrete or written out to me, like a newspaper headline or um, a product logo, and then I would sort of deface it, and then, and then I would try to get him to work some more on it, you know, and then I would work more on it. I would try to get him to do at least two things, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, likes to, he likes to do just one hit, one hit, you know, and then, <laughs> and then have me do all the work on, after that. So did you have rules like you couldn't actually paint over his stuff, or...? No, 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 just kind of original stuff all the time. Yeah. And luckily for the world, I suppose, they produced a spectacular body of work. A very large painting with the mobile gas, Pegasus, and the cut of meat, and a penguin. That's a true masterpiece. He felt that if he could align himself not only as a friend of Andy Warhol's, but actually painting with Andy Warhol, this was going to take him to the next level, that he would finally get the respect that he was looking for. Everybody attacked those paintings. John Michel embraced Andy at a period and a time when Andy was not very popular. Andy basically couldn't sell his work very well in the 80s. It, was, it wasn't a big success. Everybody wrote like bad reviews about it. Tony did not sell one painting. I don't know if Jean Michel felt bad that he let Andy down or if he believed what the press said that Andy was taking advantage of him. They said that he was Andy's lap dog and all these kind of It really hurt him. And I remember he left, like the next day, he left to, like, to Los Angeles or to, to Hawaii. And he don't come back to Andy uh, anymore, even after that, to pay. They said he was finished. It was the attitude. And um, this 
hard for us to understand. Andy Warhol died last week. One week ago today, as he lay in a hospital bed following gallbladder surgery, Andy Warhol's heart stopped beating. His condition had been stable. No one had expected him to die. I was so shocked because I always thought Andy would like outlive uh, all of us. Jean Michel was absolutely a great shock and great, great, uh, great state. I mean, all of us was really terrible. Andy Dying uh, was such a central figure of our life and of our time.